In today's video we'll talk about 3D printers and why I think they are such a handy tool for sim racing to build something like this for example. I have been using a relatively affordable Ender 3 version 2 for the last 3 years or so. It doesn't have nice features like auto bed leveling but it worked fine for me. For this video I did partner up with Geek Buying though and we got a nice little Dan Suzuki special going on for the Ender 3 version 3 SE. What a name. If you use the link in the description and enter the code nnndev 3 se you can get this one for 169 euros. This is an affiliate link and by using it you support the channel. Thank you. If you don't want to use the link you can just go to geekbuying.com. The code should still work and give you the same price. I got this one from Geek Buying as well. They do have a EU warehouse house so you don't have to deal with customs or anything. Shipping was relatively quick, took about two or three days and also assembly of the 3D printer is super easy. Basically it comes in two parts. You have the top part here this U-arm and then the base with uh, the electronics display and the, the print pad and basically you just put that that U onto the base, fixate it with a few screws like 10 or so and then plug in some connectors and that's it. Compared to my old Ender 3 version 2 this one has some more advanced features. It prints way quicker but the best thing I think is the auto bed leveling and with this feature it will basically you see a little sensor on the on the head there it will basically measure the distance to the print bed and then automatically adjust the settings so it will print your object parallel to the bed and it's just very very convenient i mean the ender 3 version 2 didn't have that i had to manually do that with four screws was not a big deal but this is definitely way more convenient as you can see it will now go to every corner and do this leveling thing and then I've had perfect results with this. I think this is very handy because you basically have nothing to do anymore. You just load the file onto the SD card or transfer it via USB and hit print and that's it. It also has one of those nice magnetic printing beds. So it's very easy to remove the print after it's done. You just pop this thing off, remove the print, done. Also very easy to clean the bed and yeah. I think this is a really good deal. I did not have to do any tweaking of parameters or anything. Everything worked pretty much straight out of the box. I have literally not configured anything. I just did the leveling once and then printed. That's it. I mean, there are definitely nicer printers on the market, but for 169 euros, this thing is pretty hard to beat, to be honest, and sufficient for anything that I have printed so far. I think for sim racing, it's insanely useful to create mounts for your sim rack or just 3D print useful peripherals. I do have a few examples here of 3D printing that I want to show you. Number one, Hugo will be very happy about this, cable management clips. Looks like this. It's a little piece of plastic with, with a T-nut mount and basically just slots in here. And yes, by the way, I cut my finger pretty badly when I tried to unplug an Ethernet cable from the switch. Don't don't ask me how I managed to do that. I'm confused myself. But yeah, these things go into the T-nut, then you turn it, it's locked in place, and then you can use these Velcro straps to cable manage. Super useful. I printed tons of that. My cable management is still kind of messy, but it's, it's much better with this than without it. But I really, really like these small clips. Second example, you see it here behind me, the wheels on the wall. This is all 3D printed. I did not buy tons of QRs and wheel and base sides to mount these wheels. It's all 3D printed like this. For example, this is what is on the wall and this fits very nicely with the SimLab Zero Play, for example. It's mounted as a slight offset so the wheels do not fall out. This is how this is done. Another mount that I have is for the SimMagic NRG QR. Very nice, same principle. This goes on the wall and then you can just plug in your wheel and yeah, very, very nice. And I also have the wheel side 3D printed. I mean, don't use this on a sim rig, but for mounting it somewhere, if you don't want to buy a lot of the wheel sides because you maybe don't use the wheel anymore, you can 3D print those as well. For example, here on my old Usher rim, I just designed the Xero Play wheel side, mounted that. Again, don't use this on the rig because this is not super, super sturdy for the forces the direct drive puts out. But for mounting it on the wall, it's definitely more than good enough. Also, for example, the Cube GT Pro V2 that you see is mounted with one of those NRG wall mounts. Looks like that and just has the regular SimMagic wheel side. And if I don't use it, I can just put it back on the wall. As easy as that, super convenient to do with the 3D printer. Another great example in the sim racing context is bezel free kit extensions. You know, these, these lenses to hide the bezels are designed for 27 inch screens. 
They do work fine with 32 inch screens, but you need to extend them to be able to use the mount, or you can also design your custom mount and 3D print it. I have one of those extensions, works very well, puts the lens basically directly on top of the bottom bezels of the monitor and then holds it in place, super convenient. You can design your own or you can just grab one of the 2000 files that are available on Thingiverse or other resources. In general, there are so many things available for you to download and just 3D print, you don't have to design your own stuff. I mean, it is a lot of fun to design your own things, but if you don't want to learn it, if you don't have the time for it, there are so many resources out there. And talking about designing your own stuff, it's also super useful for prototyping. Little spoiler here, who can guess what this could become? I'm not saying too much, but this should be a nice product soon. And also regular household items. I've destroyed one foot of our dryer when I was impatient and put it on the top of the washing machine alone. Was no problem at all. Just printed a new one. Didn't even have to design my own because there was a design available on Thingiverse. Or another example, I installed a power meter on my bike today. But of course, I forgot that uh, Shimano Holotech tool that you need to disassemble the, the crank arm or how it's called. So you get it. Off to Thingiverse. I went, found this file, printed it in 20 minutes. Problem solved. And we will also start a little DIY section on this YouTube channel where we will create some nice products that you can 3D print and also order the electronics ready-made from JLC PCB. The 3D printing is insanely cheap. I mean, these uh, spools of filament, they cost like 15, 20 euros and last pretty much forever. And also the electronics typically cost close to nothing. For example, I made a really high-end pedal electronic and ordered some samples for that. And I paid 40 euros for two of those boards. And obviously this becomes significantly cheaper when you're having higher volume but it is very feasible for DIY projects as well when you have that super low order volume. And maybe we can also organize some group buys on the discord for designs that people are interested in. I was thinking to start with a very basic RGB lit uh, SimHub compatible button box but I'm definitely open to suggestions. There's a new DIY section on the discord. Leave your ideas in there and the plan is also to make the production files for the PCBs available to YouTube members but I haven't really made up my mind yet how that exactly will work. We'll see. Okay, now to the project that most people are probably interested in that saw the thumbnail, modifying pedals. I have two of my all-time favorite pedals here, the VRS DFP pedals and the SimGrade VX Pro. But with more and more pedals coming with haptics, I think they are a little bit lacking on that side. But if you have a 3D printer, that's no problem at all. You can easily design a mount using free software or grab those two designs from the Discord. This is the VRS is already mounted. This is how the one for the SimGrade pedals look like. We'll mount that in a second. Thankfully, these have already been designed by the Discord user Sheep. Thank you very much for this. Printing takes less than an hour on the Ender 3 version 3 SE. And basically all you need for it is one of those SimMagic haptic reactors then the P2000 control box plus a power supply should be roughly below 150 euros in total. Or what you can also do is get one of those knob sound amplifiers and one of those 5.5 millimeter barrel jack adapters and then you can use that. I would recommend to get the Symagic box because in the end that supports Symagic for putting out such a great product and I do think the electronics from Symagic put out a bit better feedback than the knob sound but this is also more than good enough. You can get all the Symagic parts at Simrad's shop. You can use code DAN5 to get 5% discount on that or if you're not in Germany or Europe just google your nearest Symagic distributor. And what's so great about this is uh, you can control it via SimHub and it puts out super super useful effects on your brake pedal like ABS or tie lock for example. Even on iRacing the SimmerQ pedals can't do that as of now. It works very well and it definitely helps. If you're an eSport level driver this is probably nothing you will need. But for someone like me, above average, but very far away from the aliens, it definitely helps a lot with trail braking. So for the VRS, you just print the file. It gets mounted inside of the pedal assembly like this. If you printed it, you will easily see it. I'll also add the pictures from the Discord user Sheep that he took of the files. So again, thank you so much to him for providing these. They work very, very well. This is a perfect fit on the VRS pedals. And for the SimGrade, we'll quickly mount it. I'll show you what you need to do. This is how the haptic reactor looks like when you get it from SimMagic. It also comes with a little adapter plate like this. We don't need it. And it also comes with the screws. But basically you 3D print the adapter, then you mount it to the motor. Let's do that. You'll need four of the screws and a 2.5 mil Allen key. Should look like this. And then when we look at the pedals, you see I already replaced the screws here with terrible non countersunk screws or whatever it's called. So <laughs> grab the proper screws. You basically need these original screws just a little bit longer. But for demonstration purposes, I just found some well, Phillips head screw or whatever it's called. We'll do it with this. It doesn't look pretty. It will still work, but get the proper screws. 
What you want to do is on the back of the pedals, there are two nuts, remove these. You will need a tool, I obviously already loosened this for the video. Then next thing, you take the nuts, put them in the slot here, slide it in, looks like this. And then one thing in the current design, I think the clearance on the bottom is a little bit too low, so I'll just mount it inverted. So all I do is I put a little piece of tape on top here. Um, it's nearly Christmas, right? So we'll use this Christmas tree tape so that the little nuts will not fall out. Then you hold it in place and you just mount. This will be a, this will be a challenge to do on the video without seeing anything, but it slides in here. You tighten it from the front. Be careful to not lose all the spacers that SimGrade puts on these pedals. I don't know, this is a little weird design. There are tons of little spacers in between the pedal face and, and this bracket on the rear. Okay, I, I need to do this properly. I can't, I can't do it with this angle. What I do is put the pedal like this, remove the screws. Again, be careful because you might lose the, the spacers Then align the nuts. You can, you can use the, the Allen key to align it. Okay, now we actually did manage to grab the screws. Now don't tighten it yet, put it as low as possible and now tighten the screws from the front. Again, grab the proper screws, don't be like me. And the slot will hold the nut in the correct orientation so we'll not have to use a tool to hold the nut in the back. Just tighten this and that's it. Now this is a perfect mount. The brake still works very, very well and you get haptics on your SimGrade pedals. You can, you can definitely mount it the other way around, but the design probably will have to change to allow maybe one millimeter more clearance. It fits like this, but the cable is dangerously close to this rear metal part here. So I don't know if this is a good idea, but like this, it's no problem. Then if you have the P2000 upgrade kit, you just plug it in, configure it in SimHub and be done. If you want to use one of the knob sound amplifiers, you can control those via USB or via AUX. So whatever you want. I think this also has Bluetooth, but the latency with Bluetooth will be a little bit high. Then you can grab one of those 5.5 millimeter DC barrels. This plugs in here and then just either get banana plugs or you just remove a little bit of the isolation and lock it in place on this speaker connector. And that's pretty much it. Connect it via USB, select it in SimHub in the butt kicker menu and configure it to your liking. So yeah, I guess you get the idea now. A 3D printer is insanely useful for sim racing and also other applications around your house. And again, if you want to grab the Ender 3 V3 SE for 169 euros, my link and discount code is in the description. You get a nice discount and support the channel at the same time. What's not to like about that, right? If you did like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. Also, don't forget to join the Discord community to discuss about upcoming DIY project we will do together. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye.